So we all know that residency interviews are expensive, but today I'm going to give you the tips that helped me save over $2,000 on my interview cycle, but we're going to get to those tips after this intro. All right, guys, what is going on? Lux here from the MD Journey, helping you succeed on your medical journey with a little bit less stress. Uh, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Lux. I am a fourth year medical student applying to internal medicine who just finished his residency interviews. And I've been doing the MD Journey for the last two and a half years to help med students and pre-meds just like you. So if you enjoy what you hear today, obviously, first of all, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel and join the community. But without further ado, let's get into the video, which is how do you save money on your residency interviews? I want to give you a bunch of tips in these these tips I used um, to basically save a ton of money, over $2,000 on my residency interviews, and hopefully um, you can get close to that number as well. Let's get to tip number one, which is using your credit card points. So I mentioned this in my last couple of videos, but there is an amazing credit card. I'm going to pull it out because it's one of my favorites called the Chase Sapphire Preferred Card. Um, this is a card that's starting to get more and more popular around medical students and usually people hear about it when it's too late. So I want to give you the inside details of how to use this card, be effective. Um, even if you're averse to using credit cards, this is probably one. If you're smart, you can do a lot of damage to your residency costs. So basically the way this card works, guys, is when you open it, you have to spend, at least at this point, uh, making this video about $4,000 within three months um, and you get 50,000 points. So 50,000 points is equivalent to about two to three round trip tickets. So that's a pretty good deal at the start of it. Now the $4,000 may be uh, sticking a couple of you guys. Um, so this is basically how you would do it. If your school um, doesn't charge a fee to pay your tuition with credit cards, then definitely use this card. So basically what I do is I get a tuition bill every semester. So I got one right now. This is December. I'm going to get uh, or I'm not going to get one because I'm about to graduate. But um, usually I get one in the spring. So before my financial aid comes into my bank account and pays off my tuition, I pay the tuition bill with my credit card first and then my financial aid hits and I pay my credit card bill with my financial aid. So I get, you know, right now my taxes uh, about every semester is about $10,000 for me. Texas is pretty affordable uh, in terms of med school. So it's $10,000, so that's 10,000 points. Now, if you multiply that amongst eight semesters, four years of med school, that is 80,000 points. And so again, that's equivalent of another um, three to four flights that you can go on. Each flight is about equivalent of 300 to $400. So you can see how this starts to rack up. So if you are you know, worried about spending $4,000, most med students don't have a problem because of rent and whatnot, um, just do it when your tuition comes out. Other things you can do, like I mentioned, you can just put your rent on your credit card if your apartment or your condo house doesn't charge you a fee um, for paying rent with a credit card. If it does, there are some um, online resources. Go ahead and see how you can uh, work with your landlord potentially on paying with credit cards through like a third party app, which doesn't charge you a fee like your credit cards may, but then you still get the points. Um, so I pay my rent uh, with my credit card, my taste card, I pay my tuition and just those alone, each month I'm adding anywhere from two to 3,000 points. Every semester I'm adding another 10,000. Uh, and these are these are purchases I would have made regardless. These aren't things that I'm going out of my way to buy for the sake of points. Um, but you know this is basically accumulating over time and by the end of you know about two and a half three years of using this card i had anywhere from basically 200,000 points which is a lot of flights each of these flights is around 300 or 400 dollars uh, and i went on all of them without paying a single dime out of my pocket so using this card is amazing also if you're somebody that likes to travel um, just in general you get twice the number of points so if you get a rental car for your residency interviews uh, or some for something else, you know, you get double the points on uh, the card if you go out to eat. You know, I love using this card when I go out to eat um, or grabbing Starbucks or something of that sort because it's twice the points. It starts to add up. Uh, but again, I don't go out of my way to make any purchases that I normally wouldn't. But this card is a great resource. So start early if you're a first or second year med student. Grab the card if your credit is good enough and start putting on things without charging yourself any fees. Uh, and accumulating some credit card points because when it's time to apply for residency, guys, I promise you, you will save a ton of money. And your classmates are gonna be a little bit jealous, well, actually a lot jealous. So try to use credit card points to help you uh, on your residency costs. So getting into tip number two, which is be very careful on the amount of interviews 
and applications that you fill out. So the average interview or average residency cost um, for somebody applying individually is about $4,000 and couples matching is about almost $8,000. Most people will probably go above both of those numbers um, because students have a tendency of overcompensating. They want to apply to more programs to be safe and I get it, you know, you don't want to not match into a residency program. Um, so the first step is talking to an advisor, making sure your advice is just giving good advice and two, you know, being realistic. You know, if you're a good applicant, you don't need to apply to 70 programs. Um, even if you're a struggling applicant, you probably are going to be just fine uh, with a number much less than that. But after that phase, once you apply, when you're choosing your residency interviews, you know, if you can avoid going to an interview, if you know for sure you don't want to end up at this program and you just have a ton of safety programs, those are adding hundreds of costs every time you're going just for something that's not even a second option. So I know peers now who have finished the residency process and they know there are places that they have interviews for, but I have no intention of going to yet. They're still going to be forking up hundreds of dollars just to go sit down for, you know, two 30 minute interviews. I personally don't think it's worth it. It's not worth the time of the residency program as well. So, you know, be careful on how many programs you apply to as well as how many you actually go on. Um, consider yourself as a potential resident there. And if you don't like that thought, then probably don't apply. You know, it's good to have safety schools, um, but at the same time, you just don't want to go overboard on the number. So be careful on the number of interviews you apply to. So tip number three, and kind of on that point, is be careful on where you apply to. So a lot of people have, you know, a certain desire of geographic. You want to live on the West Coast. You want to go to California. You want to go to New York. You want to go to Florida. But if you know for, for sure that you don't have any intention of really living in any of those areas, all those places I just mentioned, California and New York, in Florida, I didn't apply to, I didn't apply to the programs there because I knew for myself and my fiance, this was not like the future um, destination that we wanted to end up in. This is just not the, the city or the location that was ideal for us. And so I didn't apply, I saved a ton of money. There's great programs in each of those states and locations, um, but at the same time, you can save a lot of money if you are realistic with yourself and saying, okay, would I really go here? Would I be happy or am I just playing, applying for the sake of a name school or a reputation? Um, so just be careful in addition to how many you apply to, to where you're applying. So tip number four, this is getting on a little bit more of a micro uh, detail, but I realized how expensive Ubers and Lyfts were uh, when you pay full price, because um, I've never taken one prior to residency interviews. I drive everywhere, uh, but I had to from airport to airport. So my tip for you is if you can uh, avoid taking Ubers and Lyft. Uh, if you're staying at your hotel, for example, see if your hotel has uh, transportation that are shuttles. Um, for, you know, if you are going to use Uber or Lyft, I recommend looking to see if they have promo codes, just, you know, the first two uh, rides free, maybe creating a separate email account, um, something of that sort to where you can get a first, you know, first couple of rides uh, free, which will start to add up over time from hotel to hotel, uh, from airport to airport. So um, use promo codes when you can, sign up with a different email for maybe just your residency cycle. Um, and if at all possible, avoid driving, see if a peer in the city can give you some transportation or just see if your hotel can provide you some free shuttle. Uh, but you know, the cost of travel, I think I kept less than maybe $150, not includes gas because I only paid for a rental car so many times and I use those other free options uh, when I could. So Ubers, Lyft, promo codes or shuttle. So make sure you are smart about your transportation. So tip number five is avoiding buying a brand new outfit. Now I totally get it. It's our new, you know, first job interview and we want to look good doing it. Uh, and so we may not mind forking up the money, but if you do have a suit um, that fits you, you know, if ladies, you have something that still fits you, uh, that's professional, um, keep to it. You know, you can save yourself a couple hundreds of dollars and if anything, spend some money on like the accessories. So, you know, dress shirts, ties are good things to just spicing up a new, out uh, an old outfit. Um, I go to Ross here uh, in the United States because they have some great um, quality things for a lot cheaper than going to, you know, some of the name brand stores. So uh, if you do need something, you know, try to uh, minimize it as possible. But if you if you have the, the main gear, the suit, the slacks, the dress shoes, um, unless they're in really bad condition and I need you to be critical on if they're actually bad, um, save yourself a couple hundred dollars um, on avoiding buying a brand new outfit. So tip number six is seeing if you can stay with family and friends versus staying at hotels. So I'm going to touch the hotels after uh, in a second, but families and friends are huge. I applied 
um, in areas that did have family and friends. I mean, that was kind of a priority for me to at least know somebody in Smith City. Um, I just didn't want to go somewhere completely new. So uh, luckily I had a friend I could crash on uh, their couch or their guest room, um, or I had a family member who would be willing to let me stay. And I did that for a majority of my interviews. And I know that that may not be uh, possible on every single one of your interviews uh, for all of you guys, but when you can, you know, hotel seems convenient. Uh, but again, they all add hundreds of dollars of cost. So avoid it when you can't. Now going on to hotels, the situations when you do. Uh, residency interviews, if they're a good one, will usually send you um, a PDF of maybe some like uh, potential hotel sites for you to choose, and they usually have a discounted rate. Most students will just uh, pick one of those hotels that's the cheapest, but I encourage you to look around. What I found is that most hotels will give you, or most residency programs will give you a hotel rate that's anywhere from 90 to 100 dollars. They're good hotels, but if I looked carefully, I would find, for example, when I went to Baltimore uh, in one of my interviews. Um, I found the hotel for $55. So you can get a decent hotel um, close by to your, your location that maybe doesn't have a discounted rate, but it's actually cheaper. So if you do need to stay at hotels, make sure you do the due diligence versus just buying um, the hotel that the program provides you. And wrapping up my tips, guys, so make sure you try to cluster your interviews. Um, if you are applying geographically in many different areas, seeing if you can schedule your interviews together. Um, a simple way to do it is, you know, if you get multiple interviews, obviously first try to reschedule them yourself individually. Two, if you haven't heard from a program and you know you want to really go there, and you also have an interview nearby, you know, without being obnoxious, it's okay to majority of the time send an email to the program director, or program coordinator mm -hmm. saying that you'll be in the area and you hope uh, that they'll consider you for maybe an interview in that uh, time frame. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but at the same time, you know, it's worth um, putting that email out there uh, while without being obnoxious um, to save yourself a couple of hundreds of dollars of having to do several round trips. So cluster your interviews uh, whenever possible. It's going to save you a ton of money. But guys, those were my main tips on how to save money on your residency interviews. Doing things like the credit card obviously by itself saved me, you know, several of hundreds of dollars, probably thousands actually. Um, but then adding on the things such as staying with friends, making sure that I'm clustering my interviews, um, using Lyft and Uber very strategically, and things such as not buying a new suit. You know, all of that uh, equivalent to over two thousand dollars. Honestly, I would say close to three thousand um, dollars during my residency cycle. Um, so hopefully these tips help you. If you guys have any more questions that are more particular to you, obviously comment down below and I'd be happy to help you either personally or make another video. Um, but as always, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you give this a video a like, subscribe to the channel um, and join the community of the MDJourney.com. Um, if you do want more resources to help you on your medical journey, check out the link down below um, with plenty of new resources, uh, blog posts, videos that I can point to you for free to help you on your medical journey. So check out the MDJourney.com in the link down in the description but as always i'm gonna stop babbling like i do at always at the end of the videos and i will see you guys in the next one take care guys